Hi, I'm Phil Maltzel and welcome to Snowmobiler TV. On today's show, we open up by going to a vintage snowmobile show. If you like loud sleds with lots of color, lots of noise, and lots of smoke, you're going to like it today. We're at the Kushaw Classic, organized by Gordon Bain. Also in today's show, we're going to Bancroft to ride the excellent trail system in that region. STV is sponsored by Yamaha, revs your heart. Kimpex, fueled by fun. And by Skidoo, never stop pushing. and probably here, I'm at a vintage event here in Auctioneros, somewhere in central Ontario. Let's check out some of the incredibly rare sleds that are on display here today. This is our second annual Kushan Classic Snowmobile uh, show and uh, we've, um, yeah, we've, this is our, our new venue and uh, we're uh, really happy with the turnout so far. I think the draw is nostalgia. It's uh, what a lot of us did with our dads uh, as kids. We grew up with these things in Halliburton in this area in, in Ontario, road snowmobiles and it's just kind of going back to our youth for a lot of us and there's a new generation that, are, that have interest too. So um, that makes it all the more fun having young people involved. Well, back in the early 70s, of course, there were there were over a hundred manufacturers. Now there's just four, so it made it uh, to me. It was more interesting back in those days. It was more more of a challenge with your uh, with your buddies, with all the different d different manufacturers. Um, it was uh, it was just more fun back then. And the race sleds, again, as you say, are are very unique. Um, but these these machines here are everyday riders that uh, again a lot of us grew up with with our dads and grandpa grandfathers and. It uh, just brings back a lot of memories. This is a great turnout. Way better than last year. It's better temperature-wise, and uh, there's a good variety of sleds here of all different makes, and everybody's, everybody's having a good time. They made 124 of this engine layout. There was 460 King Cats all together, but 124 of this engine. I've had it for 25 years, and I always wanted one from my dealership, and finally found one. But I'm no longer a dealer, but I kept the King Cat. <laughs> I seen them at the Kawartha Internationals in 1971, and I thought I said to my dad then, I said, I'd love to have one of these someday. I always wanted a King Cat. And uh, when the opportunity came along, I, I snapped up. It's a 1974 Snowjet 650. Um, it was only made half season. They made a, a 440 Sabre Jet in 74, and then halfway through the season, Snowjet was trying to save the company, so they had these 650 Hurst. They put them in, about, uh, there was less than 300 of them, um, trying to save the company, put it out there, and it sold really well. But after that, you know, not too long after Kawasaki bought them, and then they were history. But uh, to find 650s are pretty rare. Some people think I built it because they've never seen one. Um, anybody that had a 440 would recognize it. They probably haven't seen a 650 either. A guy that we're sitting with today actually had a 440 way back in the day, and he'd never seen a 650. And we've talked to people that, at shows that have raced, raced Thunder Jets and still never even seen one. So it's, it's pretty rare. This is a Invader made by Drake Industries out of Michigan. It's strictly a racing snowmobile. Um, in three years production, they made somewhere between 11 and 20 sleds. Uh, I know of about 10 of them. And uh, this one's ultra rare because it's never been run. It's brand new. It's 1974. Never been run? It's never been run. It might have run across the factory floor at, in 1974, but it was cornered in the factory. Uh, because I don't think the free airs could compete with the liquid cools, so they didn't uh, they didn't run this one. It's brand new. 
Well, I tell you, in 1978, uh, there was two of these sleds. Um, these two 440s are two of 12 that were manufactured. One was raced by Bobby Donahue out of uh, uh, Wisconsin Rapids, uh, Minnesota, and the other sled was raced by uh, Doug Hayes out of Cramden, uh, Wisconsin. Both factory Supermod right, Raiders, uh, sorry, racers. Um, this one snowmobile here, this uh, Doug Hayes sled was um, uh, was built uh, just for the Eagle River race, and it was raced at Eagle River on January 12th, uh, 1978. Uh, this sled of Bobby Donahue's was raced at Alexandria and again at West Yellowstone, and uh, we brought them back to life, and uh, they're a great part of uh, snowmobile race history, especially for Skidoo factory racers, and uh, I'm hoping everybody's enjoying them at the show. I guess it'll almost just be the racing heritage. Back in the day, they pretty much dominated the late 70s in racing, and they were way ahead of their time. Very popular sled. Burke and Marine themselves, very popular. Um, they only lasted for, well, the Twisters were only about three, four years. One, they were very light chassis. I think the liquid snow Twisters, I've heard a lot of people talk around 320 pounds. I believe the trail chassis are around 360 which is pretty light for a uh, sled overall, especially back in the day too. And you throw that Kohler power for short aluminum skis and just yeah. a short little body and you got a heck of a race sled going. There's something about these vintage shows that is timeless magic. These snowmobiles left their mark on our culture. They represent a magical era when people conquered winter by getting outside and enjoying the snow rather than hiding inside. Families would fire up these sleds put the kids in the sleigh and head out for a day of winter fun. The era of these sleds was also an era of freedom. There were no fishing licenses, no snowmobile licenses, and many sleds were never even insured. After all, if you bounced off a tree, you pounded out the dent, you fiberglassed the hood, and you were good to go. Nobody ever rode off one of these machines. It was garage repair time at its finest. The simplicity of these sleds is quite incredible. You won't see high output ignitions, no injection systems, and their primitive suspensions were designed to move a mere three inches. After all, that was the expectation. The sound of these is as memorable as the smell. Every sled was loud and every sled had the primitive 30 to 1 fuel oil mixture that left everyone's winter clothing with a unique permanent odor. Mm -hmm. 